Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Last month, we ventured to Brandon, Manitoba amidst the buzz of the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference. Now, amidst the vibrant energy of the event, we seized the opportunity to engage with local elected leaders hailing from across the province. We delve into the pressing issues and accomplishments confronting communities firsthand, amplifying the voices of municipal leaders. We'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Mayor Debbie Fiedelkorn from the rural municipality of St. Clements. In the heart of every thriving community lies a well-crafted strategic plan. But crafting such a plan requires expertise, experience, and a deep understanding of local needs. Enter Strategic Steps, your partner in municipal strategic planning. Strategic Steps team of experts have years of experience in municipal administration at Strategic Steps, they just don't develop plans. They co-create homegrown strategies tailored to your unique community. They listen, they collaborate, they empower your community to thrive. Contact Strategic Steps today and take the first step towards a brighter future for your municipality. Call Strategic Steps at 780-416-9255 or visit strategicsteps.ca to get started. Well, Debbie, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to ask a sort of simple question, but it's an overarching one. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Debbie? Well, I guess my, my commitment to my community goes back quite a ways. Um, before I got involved in the political side of, of the municipality, I was actually in, I was a staffer at the RM um, for my career. So, as in what I position, was, if you don't want me asking, no, or I'm assuming many positions, but yes, I started out as a tax clerk and I kind of worked my way up. And when I left the employee of the RM, I was the assistant CAO. So, and prior to leaving the municipality, when we had some changes in, in management, I ended up being the acting CAO on two different occasions. And uh, then when I left the employee of the RM, I stayed home and was retired for four years. And then I decided that um, I would like to see some changes in the community. Um, didn't necessarily agree with some of the things that were happening. So I threw my hat in the ring for a council seat and I was lucky enough to be elected. So you, you've sat on both sides of that council table then. So this is a unique question I get to ask you is... You have, I'm a, I, would, I would guess, I would hazard a guess that you have seen the changing of the, the role that municipalities are playing compared to what it was 2015, even 10 years ago, com to compared to what we are now. Do you think, and I say this with a broad stroke, do you think that the residents of your community, of all communities, understand the role, the jurisdictional role that the municipality plays? I believe that some of them do, okay. but not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I guess I can just tell you in the last election in 2022, I didn't have any competition, so I was acclaimed. Uh, we have six councillors in the municipality. We only have two wards, though, so we have three people representing each area of the municipality. Uh, in the southern part of the municipality, there was no election. The three incumbents were acclaimed. In the north part of the municipality, there were ten running for, or no, six running for the three seats, and the three incumbents got back in. So, you know, there, there's. Um, I think there's a, maybe a misunderstanding out there of what the role of a council or a council member is. And we make a lot of tough decisions and we have to make sure that we're looking after our residents. We have to make sure that we're trying to keep the taxes affordable. We have to bring amenities to our municipality. Um, and we have to make sure that we're providing what the residents are looking for. So it brings me to the, the, the main crux of the why we, we're having you on. And I want to preface this as I always do on this show. This is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This is not a motion of council, a direction of council, or even a policy of council. This is your opinion, your opinion alone. What do you believe is the biggest challenge facing the RM today as of this conversation? 
the biggest challenge facing RM, our RM and many other RMs is the um, infrastructure funding that we get from both the federal and provincial governments. Uh, most municipalities have a lot of infrastructure deficits, I'm going to say, like our roads are in very bad shape. Um, you know, we try our best to maintain. We as a municipality put a lot of money from our gas tax into a reserve strictly for roads. And uh, I think for us that would be the main one would be our infrastructure deficit as far as roads are concerned. Uh, we have been very fortunate. We have been able to put sewer and water in different parts of the municipality and are very appreciative of the funding that we receive from the Manitoba Water Services Board in the province. It has helped a lot. And, um, you know, it's, it's like there's, that's probably the, the two worst things that are, that are kind of playing on us right now. So you mentioned the province. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you the political question a little bit here. But th we're recording this almost a week after the provincial budget was tabled yes. by this new provincial government. Did you see anything in this budget that you as the mayor of your RM look at and go, OK, while it's a good first step, it could have gone further? Um, yeah, there are a couple of things. It's it's mainly to do with funding and yeah. where the funding is coming from. Uh, you know, we want to keep our taxes affordable for our residents, and and we have a very large municipality. We have about seven hundred and sixty miles of roads to look after. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and things aren't cheap these days, are they, man? No. And then, of course, our population is is just over eleven thousand. Okay. Our summer population <laughs> is probably uh, almost double. Okay. Because we have all the cottage country right from Baconia right up to Grand Beach and Grand Marais. Grand Marais is in our municipality, but Grand Beach Provincial Park is not. Okay. So we have all the cottage country along Lake Winnipeg. And, you know, the, the, there's a lot of residents. There's not a lot of people who come there in the summer at all, right? No. So, you know, so we, uh, so we have a lot of people to look after. And, and, you know, when you look at the cottage country, I'm going to say, compared to our full-time residents, um, some cottage country does have a lot of full-time residents at this point in time, but their needs are a little bit different. Yeah. And and the community, like from, I would say, from about Lebo South, um, they're, they're a little bit more demanding in some areas than the cottage country. No, understandable. Yeah. Um, you have to balance the needs and the wants of your community as a whole because you talk about infrastructure. Infrastructure is an issue that is not just happening in Clemens, but it's happening across Manitoba and even Canada. How do you balance the needs and wants of your individual community members with the needs and wants of the community as a whole? Because I'm assuming you have gone to the grocery store or gone to a event where people come up to you and say, that pothole needs to be fixed, that service level needs to be upgraded. How do you balance that with understanding that you have a finite amount of money that you can spend every year and you can't run deficits? Right. Well, what we try and do is we try and look after some of these things before they happen, actually. <laughs> like, um, a good example that I'm going to tell you is that in the last week and a half, we have been doing in the, in most, well, in the Grand Marais area too, but more in the southern part of the municipality, thawing of culverts. Because this freeze-thaw, freeze-thaw that we've gone through, the culverts are not just frozen like six inches or a foot from each end. They're frozen if it's a 10-foot culvert. That 10-foot culvert is totally frozen. Yeah. So it's taking a long time for our public works to get out there and get all these done. Very luckily, we haven't had any issues with buildings going underwater or things like that. So that's always a bonus for us. And um, I guess just, you know, to keep everybody safe and to keep everybody not ha I'm, I don't want to use the word happy but content with what we're doing <laughs> I love that you use the political word content there because I have done this show enough that I know that you're not pleasing 100% of the people in your community De definitely no 
not. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> so, uh, going uh, just because I'm cautious of time here, and I know this is we, we're you're here for the events and you're here for the breakout sessions, uh, but I've got to ask about tourism. It is my favorite subject, and okay. I love talking about tourism because I've said if you come on this show, I'm coming to your community. So this summer, I'm making a big swing through Manitoba, and our, the Arm and Clemens is part of that tour. So what should I do? What are the tourist destinations? What are the things that are happening in uh, the RM of Clemens during the summer months that you would recommend to people coming through? Well, in the municipality, uh, we do have a trail system right from Birds Hill Park. You can darn near get to Grand Beach on our trail system. So um, we have a lot of historic places. Uh, We have the St. Peter's uh, Historic Church just in East Selkirk. We have the uh, grist mill from, um, and it's in Lockport. Uh, there's there's a ton of, of very special places. Uh, just in the municipality, there is the Broken Head Wetlands uh, yeah. Reserve, the walking trail in there. It's beautiful. If you go in June, you can see all the lady slippers and all the wild flowers that are in there. Um, just and there's there's just driving through the municipality. There's a lot of neat little places that you can stop at. So I can't wait to visit. Um, but my final question to you, and it's the million dollar question. I think every municipal leader knows how to answer, but I like to put it on the record. What makes the RM of Clemens such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? I think for the RM of St. Clemens, what we provide our residents is we provide the things that they are looking for, the amenities they are looking for. We've worked very hard to put sewer and water into some of our areas. We've worked very hard in establishing a community building in the south part of our municipality. We've actually just broken ground there um, a couple of weeks ago and it should be ready in uh, 2025. It's going to be a community hub. Uh, everyone is welcome to go there. There is a pond there. There's a walking trail there. There's a playground for the kids. Uh, it's it's going to be one of our best, best things that will be completed before the next municipal election. So. And it, there's just, there's a lot of things to do. There's a lot of hunting and fishing in the municipality in various areas of the municipality. So, yeah, like, I mean, we have the uh, federal government pier on Road 100 oh. at Lake Winnipeg. Yep. So there's a lot of people that, there's a beach there, so they go there and, they, and there is some fishing there. And a lot of commercial fishermen use that pier at Road 100, so... Uh, Mayor Debbie, thank you so much for doing this. This is an honest, honest pleasure, (laughs) and I'm going to make sure I get it right here. I'm looking forward to visiting the RM of Saint Clement's later (laughs) on this year. I apologize for that. That's okay, not a problem. But thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much. We want to thank the Association of Manitoba Municipalities for inviting us to this year's Spring Convention in Brandon, Manitoba. This episode would not have been possible without their support. Now, if you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, the local government at work. We are your go-to source for comprehensive municipal coverage from across Canada, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged on the issues affecting municipalities. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.